Okay, so we're still on lecture number 7, eh? SIG 2004, Classic Sedimentology, and still on the topic of um, bed form. Right? So in part 2, we've, um, we've looked at um, two um, bed forms, i.e. you have the lower plane beds followed by ripples. Right? So these are bed forms which develop at uh, lower velocity. Now, uh, let's look at a third type of bed form. This is what we call dunes. And these are bed forms which develop at relatively higher velocities compared to ripples. Right? So, what are dunes? Dalam bahasa Melayu dia gumuk, gumuk pasir, ya? Um, these are large asymmetrical bed forms which develop, again, under subcritical flow. They are relatively larger compared to ripples. They have lengths of between 0.75 meters to more than 100 meters. So these, these can be very large features. Um, heights are between 0.075 meters to more than 5 meters. Dunes uh, are most common in sands coarser than 0.15 millimeters, i.e. in sands which are fine to very coarse grain. So these are examples of dunes. Uh, in this case, uh, okay, uh, in this case, the dunes are developed on a tidal flat, and the current was moving from the right to left. So remember, uh, dunes are also bed forms which develop under unidirectional flow or current. Right? And you can also see, notice that you have ripples superimposed. These are smaller ripples on top of your larger dune. Um, dunes also develop internal cross stratification, but we call the internal strata cross bedding rather than cross lamination. Right? So yeah, that's the point here. Ripples can be superimposed on dunes. So dunes are larger compared to uh, ripples, but the shape is very similar. They have uh, a crest, a brink, a stars, and a lee. And you can also determine the current flow direction just looking at the dip direction of the lee slope. Right? But they are not the same thing as ripples. They are not just merely large ripples. Dunes are not large ripples, but a dynamically different bed form. Right? They are larger compared to the ripples, longer and higher compared to ripples. And to demonstrate this, uh, we have this plot here. This is by uh, Fleming 1988, but you, sh you should also read the paper by Ashley, which uh, reviews uh, the, the terminology for these kinds of uh, flow transverse uh, bed forms. Right? So what we have here in this plot, it is a plot of height, your bed form height here in meters, going from uh, yeah, a small to very high, 100 meters here, versus uh, spacing. So spacing is just another term for length. So back from length, I'm going from short to very long towards this side. All right. So this is the relation that, that uh, Fleming got. And you can actually see two populations of bed forms here. So you have dunes. This is a population for dunes, which is very large right? compared to ripples, which are very small. Now, interestingly, there is this gap between the two populations. Showing you, it's not really just a simple gradation from ripples to dunes. Right? Uh, bad forms which are transitional between them are not present. Okay? So dunes and ripples, even though they have the same shape, they are not the same thing. You can also have ripples on top of dunes. Yeah? But the terminology for describing dunes is the same with ripples. So you have height, length, a stoss, a lee, a crest, a brink, a trough, and so on. Okay? It's just that the dunes are larger bed forms. Now, you can actually, in nature, you can actually identify two different types of dunes. First is what we call 2D dunes, two-dimensional dunes, right? Uh, two-dimensional dunes tend to have a long, straight to sinuous crest. So this is the crest. Yeah. And this is the lee. On, on this side is the stoss. So we know that the flow is moving from the right 
to the left. So this is a trough. Okay. So yeah, you have, tend to have straight long crest in two-dimensional dunes, right? Uh, the, sli the lee slope is also near to the angle of repose, which is between 25 to 30 degrees. Then you have what are called three-dimensional dunes or 3D dunes. Okay, so the crest line is no longer simple and straight, but it is complex. It can be sinuous to lunate. Right? Uh, 3D dunes also tend to be shorter in length and also tend to be higher, and they have a much gentler lee slope less than 25 degrees. Right? So you have these two different types of dunes. So what is the relationship between the two? Why do you get sometimes uh, uh, straight crested dunes? Why do you get sometimes complex three-dimensional crested dunes? Um, it seems that the plan form of the dune varies with flow strength. Right? Uh, at lower flow strengths, you get straight crested uh, dunes, which with increasing flow strength, it changes into um, 3D crested dunes. Okay, so lower flow velocities, higher flow velocities. Right. So I'll show you block diagrams of the two different types of dunes here. So this is a, a cartoon representation of a 2D dune, two-dimensional. Right. So the current is moving from the left to the right. So you get these straight crests, right? And you have the slope, the lee slope, which I've colored with a shadow here. Right? And this is the soft side, which is longer and gentler, right? So the crest is relatively straight. You also have these small ripples superimposed on it, just to show you, right? They can be superimposed. Okay. Now, if you make a cross section of your 2D dune, this is what you get. It's very similar to what you get in ripples, right? So you get, because of erosion, you get um, several layers of this cross stratification, right? So these are internal strata, internal stratification in the form of cross strata, but we don't call them cross lamination, we, we call them cross beds, because uh, in this case, the beds are much thicker, right? More than, uh, more than 70 centimeters thick, all right? So in the case of 2D dunes, this is what this is, this is the kind of cross stratification you get. We call it tabular or planar cross bedding. All right. So from the side, um, you get this somewhat straight uh, cross stratification in cross beds or faucets we call them. Uh, from a different orientation, let's say from the front, this is how they look like. Right. They tend to look like parallel lamination, just simple horizontal layering. Right. Or sometimes just low angle cross stratification. Uh, this is something uh, to note that uh, when you are working in outcrop, right? Sometimes uh, you're not sure. Am I looking at a parallel lamination, planar lamination, or am I just looking at cross beds at a different angle? Because they look very similar, right? Okay. So that is why when you have an outcrop, if you want to look to identify the sedimentary structure. Please walk through the outcrop and look at the structure at different angles. What might look like parallel stratification may actually be the, the front part of dunes. Yeah? So it actually is actually cross bedding if you look at it from the side. Right? So these are examples of these are examples of dunes displaying cross bedding. Right. So the top here are two dunes. Uh, these are these were developed on tidal flats, modern day tidal flats. So this is the stoss side, stoss, the crest. You can see the brink here, and this is the lee. So the direction is from of the current is moving from left to right. And these geologists here have, have made a trench, right? They dug into the side of the dune, and this is what they found inside it, the cross section. You see these inclined cross strata. You have cross bedding inside it. So it's straight here, so it's tabular cross bedding. Right? So uh, yeah, these are because you get that because these are 2D uh, dunes. You can also see the same kinds of features in ancient rocks. So this is an ancient sedimentary rock. This is Mesozoic in age. And you notice this single bed here, right? 
inside this bed, you see this inclined cross strata. These are cross beds. And they are relatively straight and continuous along the bed here, right? So you have these sets of tabular cross beds. And, and we can make the interpretation that these were developed uh, associated with two-dimensional dunes. And we can make inferences regarding the flow velocity and so on. What about the internal stratification of 3D dunes? Uh, it's a little bit different. This is what you get in 3D dunes. Right? Um, so in, two, in 3D dunes, you have these uh, sinuous uh, crests eh, to your dunes. Right? So this is the stoss, this is the lee. Right? And you, have, you tend to have a trough in, in, in the front which is more concave compared to the trough in 2D dunes. And this is because you have more erosion in, in, at, at high velocity. Okay? Now, from the, uh, from the side, it looks very similar to what you get in, in 2D dunes, right? So, yeah, look at that. It's about the same. But they tend to pinch out at shorter distances. See? Which is out here. It becomes eroded by overlying uh, dune uh, cross beds, all right? But from the front here, along the flow strike, we say, they form this trough-shaped, concave upward geometries. This is trough cross bedding, and it is developed only in 3D dunes, okay? So uh, you have trough cross bedding associated with 3D dunes. Trough shapes are visible on the vertical section, oriented perpendicular to the flow here. And this is due to deposition in the trough scours as the bed form migrates. So you get this scouring in the troughs. So that is why you get this uh, concave upward uh, trough cross bed in the shapes. Okay? And yeah, just to show you some field examples of trough cross bedding at different orientations. These are trough cross beds from the Archean uh, Missy Formation in uh, Manitoba in Canada. Okay? So you're looking at uh, a, a 3D dune at different orientations. This is from the top. Uh, should be arrows there, sorry. Okay, okay. So from the top here, top exposure, this is what you get, these uh, uh, accurate uh, lines here, right? So this is the top part of the cross beds here. From the side, this is how it looks like. You can see the cross beds, but they tend to pinch out uh, rapidly towards the front or the back, okay? And from the front, perpendicular to the flow, you start to get trough cross bedding. Okay, and that's trough cross bedding. Okay, so at low flow velocities, uh, given that you get you have the right grain size, you get lower plane beds. You increase the velocity, you get uh, ripples, and ripples can change into dunes at higher velocities, right? At, and, and beyond uh, dunes, you can also get uh, at higher velocities. You can also get what we call upper plane beds. So you have lower plane beds, and then you have upper plane beds. And superficially, they resemble; they are very similar to each other. You have a flat surface, right? and inside it, you have plane parallel lamination, and just horizontal lamination like this. Right? Okay. Um, but yeah, upper plane beds develop at higher velocities, right, with more intense sediment transport, and upper plane beds tend to develop, develop in finer grain sands, in medium to fine grain sands. Remember to for lower plane beds, it develops in coarser grains, right? Coarse sands, very coarse sand. Right? Uh, so how do you differentiate between upper plane beds and lower plane beds? It's, it's sometimes difficult to differentiate between the two, but one clue is the grain size. Next, if you look at the bedding plane at the top here, you can, in the case of upper plane beds, you can see these lines, these parallel lines, right, of, uh, which are of higher relief compared to the lower parts in between. Okay? So these are what we call current lineations, and they develop on the top of the bedding plane. Okay. Um, so current relations are regular relief as flow parallel mounds of uh, so I'll just repeat myself here. So you just get this uh, higher higher areas here, ridges here, and lower areas here. And this is developed because you have a current moving. In this case, let's say the current was moving from the left to the right, right? 
So what happens is that the current moves, it sweeps some of the grains towards the side. And this results in a ridge, right? And you get lots and lots of these ridges here. So this is current uh, lineation. Right? And it doesn't happen in lower plane beds. In cross-section, this is the internal stratification you get. A simple parallel lamination, straight lines. Here, all right? So in the case of upper plane beds, you can see if you have uh, current lineations in this case, uh, you can say at least you can say this: the current was either moving from left to right or right to left. But we cannot really be sure which one. Right? Is it really? Yeah? Because it doesn't have a stoss side and a lee side, right? Okay, so those are the main types of bed forms you get under a unidirectional current flow. Right? So you can have uh, lower plane beds, ripples, dunes, and upper plane beds. Right? And you tend to get um, things like upper plane beds and dunes at higher velocities and ripples and lower plane beds at lower velocities. But remember, you need to also uh, have the right uh, grain size. Okay. Now, what happens at really high flow velocities? Right? Uh, the bed form that we looked at before uh, developed at, in supercritical flow conditions. What about at, uh, at subcritical flow conditions? What about in supercritical flow conditions? What kinds of bed forms do you get? Uh, lots of funny things you, you start to get. Uh, lots of funny kinds of bed forms start to develop at super uh, once you're near supercritical flow conditions. Um, this is a relatively... Uh, these bed forms are relatively poorly understood compared to the those things like dunes and ripples, right? Because a lot of these are kinds of bed forms at high flow velocities, uh, they tend not to become uh, preserved in the rock record because at high velocities, they tend to become destroyed and eroded. But what we know is this, uh, you tend to get symmetrical bed forms uh, developed at near critical to supercritical flow conditions when your Froude number uh, is very near to 1. Okay? So remember supercritical flow and supercritical flow, which is covered in previous lectures, right? So you don't get uh, asymmetrical bed forms with a Stoss and a Lee, you get symmetrical bed forms where the slope on one side, the upcurrent side, and the downcurrent side are almost the same angle. Right? Okay, so at um, conditions near critical to supercritical, you start to get bed forms which are symmetrical. Okay? And they are also in phase with the flow. Right? So if you have a wave uh, on, on the surface of the water flow, the bed form is also in phase the same kind of waveform, okay? a symmetrical waveform here, right? So at low flow velocities, as you get um, these bed forms will be migrating down current, going from the uh, left to the right here, following the current. So you can get cross stratification inside it. But when you further increase the flow, it changes. It becomes these standing in phase waves, all right? So you get undulating lamination inside it, right? and aggradation. Now, something funny happens when you further increase the flow at really high velocities. Um, you still get these symmetrical bed forms, but now the cross stratification is opposite to the flow direction. But you have these bed forms which are actually moving up current. Yeah, remember, current is moving from left to right. But here, your bed forms are moving from right to left, opposing now. And these kinds of features are called, these kinds of bed forms are called anti dunes So something funny happens at really a high velocity, start to get a deposition in the opposite side, All right? So you get in phase symmetrical wave bed forms at uh, near critical to super critical conditions. So going back to the sequence, you have uh, low flow velocities, you have uh, lower plane beds, followed by ripples, followed by uh, dunes and upper plane beds, and really high velocities, you get these in phase symmetrical wave bed form, right? Which first uh, migrate down current, but then change to up current migration at real high velocities. Uh, 
Okay, so I've reached my final slide. I'll just end it like this. Lah. Um, so, bad forms are important because, because they affect first the topography of your, let's say, your seabed or your riverbed. Right? So, they can become up obstacles or hazards. Right? Um, so, it's, it's good to understand uh, what kinds of bad forms can develop at different flow conditions, different flow velocities, uh, different sediment types and so on, right? Okay. Uh, another use for understanding um, the relationship between the um, flow conditions and sediment texture and bed form is you can use it to interpret earth history. So let's say I have a sedimentary log here, right? So at the bottom, I have uh, a mudstone. Which is then erode, uh, which is then sharply overlain by a fine grain sandstone. So the grain size doesn't change for the sandstone that much. Okay. In the upper part here, and we notice that in the at the base of the sandstone you get plain parallel lamination in the fine grain sand. But this is overlain by a stack of cross beds, and the cross beds is shows trough cross bedding. So this is concave upward. Uh, surfaces here. So this is uh, um, this is uh, trough cross bedding, right? So we can actually come up with a story regarding how the sediments were deposited, right? So originally you had uh, low energy deposition, maybe a swamp, right? You had clay particles falling down very slowly through the process of suspension, so get suspended low. This was followed by a high energy event, an erosion event. Look at this erosion here, it's cow shape. Maybe it's a channel. Right? Or part of a river. Uh, when it was followed by deposition, meaning that the flow velocity was decreased, so your grains can start to fall down. And the first set of bed form you get are plain beds, plain parallel lamination. And we know that these plain beds were formed at higher flow velocities. Now, the top part here is made up of trough cross beds, and this shows you that the velocity was decreasing. So you get this. Erosion surface followed by a decrease in flow velocity with time upwards. Right? So we get a nice uh, story to interpret. How were these uh, sediments deposited? So I'm using this erosion, uh, decreasing velocity of the stop. I can make a reasonable interpretation that maybe these were fluvial channel deposits. Right? You have these rivers flowing. And these rocks here are from Bintulu in Sarawak. Okay? And they are 20 million years old based on fossils. So I can make the story that uh, I had rivers flowing with currents which are strong enough to form uh, dunes and plain beds right? 20 million years ago. Um, meaning that the environment was not really that different uh, to what we have today in Sarawak. Okay, okay so I'll uh, uh, end there with that interpretation. Bye-bye.